First thing I want to do is to is thank our sponsors for today's event, TD Canada Trust, the Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association. So please give it up for them. Thank you very much. There are some green cards on your table. If you have any questions of our speaker, please write out the questions and the ambassadors, or the chamber ambassadors in those lovely green jackets. Uh, they'll come by and pick up the questions and we'll ask as many questions, uh, time permitting. Uh, there's a board member of the chamber who's with us here. Colin, give everyone a wave. Thanks, Colin. Thank you. Give Colin a wave. <laughs> Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to today's speaker. We are pleased to welcome uh, Cavus Reed, who will share his perspective on safety leadership, with, which is based on ICE leadership, with ICE standing for intellectual, communal, and emotional, as well as zero to team, the making of high performance teams. Cavus's work, Cavus's extensive work with within professional football and within professional athletes gives him a unique viewpoint on the meaning of safety leadership. He is currently the general manager for the Montreal Alou Alouettes and made one hell of a signing, if I can say that. Uh, you got a great quarterback. There's no question about that. But he's also worked, it almost seems like every single team in the league, he's worked with the Edmonton Eskimos, the Toronto Argonauts, the Ottawa Renegades, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and of course, the one, the only, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Go team. He also had a stint with the Kansas City Chiefs. Cavus's educational experience includes a Bachelor of Science in Biology and an MBA degree. Please Give a warm Saskatchewan Rough Rider welcome to Cavus Reed. Thank you so very much for allowing me the time to share a bit with you. I understand that everyone's digesting their food, so I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't take too much of your time uh, in sharing a message that is very, very important to me and something I'm convicted that should be at the epicenter of everyone's heart and organizations as a whole. As you see behind me, <clears throat> I have a little trust thing here. And I use the analogy with our kids all too often. And this is a common psychological and uh, team building thing where the person falls back and he said, are you trusting that I'm going to catch you? And parents would be able to recognize this if they have little kids, right? And they'll know that their kids will jump off of anything into your arms, right? until they become teenagers and then they refuse to jump because they don't trust that you're going to catch them. And for me, <clears throat> this is symbolic of what is most important in an organization, what is most important in any social or any group structure. It's the element of trust. And that trust is built through having a team that functions in a high performance, high execution way. I call it going from literally zero to team. Why did I choose that theme, zero to team? Well, too often in the team environment, as we often preach, the team part of it is forgotten. It is given up to the individuals. The team environment takes a post position to the individual. And one of my favorite saying in the team structure is, one is too small a number to be great. And if you think about your social structure, you think about your group structure, and you think about the individual putting themselves before the team, and you think about the compromise that leads when it comes to team success, and not just in your corporations, not just in your business life, but think about your family structure, that team your family structure. When one person puts their, their uh, well-being above everyone else, there's usually issues or usually problems. Zero to team means we can get there faster, we can get there safer, we can get there more efficiently together. In order to do that, in order to have that team which is high performance, that team, that championship caliber team. There are a few elements that we have to have within that construct. Number one is a shared, defined focus. Rhetorical question for you. In your business structure, 
in your social structure, what are your focuses? What are the things that you're focusing on? What are the targets? And don't give me a number, a bottom line. What are the true core focuses that you have as a business, as a social group, as a family structure? What's your focus? In order to hit a target, you have to see the target. You have to know the target. In order to achieve your goals and objectives as a team, you have to have them well defined. And all too often in business, and football is a business, the failure happens in two areas. One I'll get to later, leadership. The other I'll get to is focus. When you don't have a defined focus or you don't have that target, you don't have navigation. You don't have a direction. I make it analogous to flying a plane at night without radar. Where are you going to go? How are you going to land this baby? We're just going to cruise along. A clear, defined focus. Think about your organization. Think about your business. Is everyone focused on the same target? Does everyone have the same goals and objectives? Are everyone synergistically pulling it in that direction? That is probably, arguably, one of the number one reasons why corporations, businesses, family structures fail. The other, again, we'll get to that point. The second part of that focus thing is now you have that target. You know exactly where you want to go. You have radar. The beacon signals are being sent back to you. You know exactly where you're flying. Wow, we're on pace now. Here's what derail a high performing team. Here's what will allow you to get off course, not keep your target and objectives in sight. When the individual parts lose focus on their roles, we've established a focus. Now let's take time to define the roles. We hopefully have an all-star quarterback. Thank you. His role as quarterback is to be the quarterback, to be the team leader, to efficiently pass the ball, to efficiently take the snap from center and execute the play, to guide and lead the 11 other guys that are on the field. That's his role. When that quarterback steps outside of his role and wants to be the offensive coordinator and say, hey, call this play. Or you, Mr. Running Back, you need to step this way instead of that way. Or you, Mr. Receiver, stop running at 12 yards, running at 5 yards. Come on, do your job. When you step outside of your defined role and think about your situations, one of the major reasons we will have setback once the goal and focus are defined is people not embracing their defined roles. Everyone wants to be the president. From the time they got hired as the clerk in the mailroom, I should be president. I can do that better. If I were CFO, we would not be in this situation. If I were general manager, we would have better players. Wait a minute. You're in my shop. Who's tending to your shop? The inefficiency happens. The compromise of the integrity of the team happens. Clearly define the roles, ladies and gentlemen. Clearly put people in focus on what the targets are. Clearly define these things over communicate these elements of team because if you don't if there isn't an emphasis on those two elements there are going to be compromise in the integrity of your businesses there are going to be compromise in the integrity of your family structure your social structure any group structure not clearly defining roles and having people clearly execute their roles will lead to compromise 
I, as general manager, shall find the players, shall make certain that we're fiscally responsible, make certain that we're not over the salary cap, make certain we have 12 guys on the field. I have to make certain those things happen. That stems back to this big word, this broad word, this overdefined word, leadership. Leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, I will present to you the number one reason, and I said arguably, but I'm going to say in my mind, this is the number one reason teams fail, businesses fail, families fail, countries fail. Leadership. And I challenge you to think of a situation where there is a compromise in your group, in your business, in your family. I challenge you to not tell me that leadership has an issue with it or leadership has a part in it. I challenge you to defend that leadership does not have a part in a compromise of any group structure. The epicenter, the heartbeat of every, every social organization, every government organization, every familial organization is leadership. And when you do not have strong, well-defined, competent leadership, you have an issue. And I will bet you this very moment that if I walk around this room and I survey each and every one of you and ask you, how do you define leadership? We'll probably have a different answer from each and every one of you. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I can't even count to 12. But I will tell you this. I can define leadership for you. Leadership to me is about what you saw at the beginning. It is simply this and only this. It's the management of people's trust. Think about that again. I'm challenging you to think today. It's the management of people's trust. As a father, I'm trusted by my children to do the right things. As a coach, literally and figuratively, players put their lives in my hands, trusting that my decisions are safe. On the job site, as a supervisor, those people under your leadership are trusting that you're going to do things the right way so that they can get home safely. Their families are trusting their safety in your hands. Trust. I will follow you. I will follow you if I trust you. I will willfully follow you if I trust you. Colin and I have a lot in common. We love to laugh. We love the art of business. We love mentoring. We love communicating with people. We love hugging. I also discovered recently that we also love Maxwell. And John Maxwell is a scholar beyond scholars. Well, well, well versed individual in all sorts of social and spiritual uh, 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 areas. One area he's an expert in is leadership. And he came up with the five levels of leadership. And he has a pyramid where at the epicenter of it is people. <coughs> and diving into people and investing into people. And as I studied it more, I, I thought, Cavis, you're not very smart. And if you're going to talk about this, you might want to make it simpler. And so I came up with, from Maxwell, 
three levels of leadership, not five. Level one, people will follow you if they have to. It's a transactional. You're head coach, you're general manager, I'm player, I have to follow you. You have the title. Come on. Companies give out titles like they give out chocolates now. In fact, in one organization, we had more managers than we had people under the managers. They have to, based on your title. But where it gets a little bit more challenging for leadership, where it becomes a little bit more productive for leadership is where not a lot of people want to go. And that's to have people follow you because they want to. Why do people want to follow you? People want to follow you for one and one and only reason. Because you're giving something to them. You're contributing to their lives. You're contributing to their well-being, their growth. You are actually investing in them, sincerely. Now, I want to be around you. You make me laugh, therefore I want to be with you. Few get to that level. Easy with the title. Now we got to make a temporal investment in people. It becomes a little bit more difficult. And just like the Michael Jordan level, as I call it, very few people get to this level. People following you because they need to. Oh my God, you're thinking, Cave is oxymoronic. You're saying this one is monetary and then this one is not monetary. A need has to be equated with money. I, this doesn't make any. I, need. I have invested so much into you. I've poured my heart literally in you as a leader. I want the very best for you. I'm not afraid of you taking my job. I want this team to be as strong as it possibly can be. And under my leadership, I'm going to give you everything I have to make certain you grow, you develop, and you're the very best you can be. I'm making a conscious investment in you. Man, you wake up in the morning going, I need to get to work. I got to go. They really are about me. I, I need this. It's an addiction now. That environment becomes an addiction. And that team becomes efficient. That team now has become high performing. That team now become that championship team. Because we've created a need. We've created a need. Leaders, this is not a photo of Colin. I just put him in an avatar. <laughs> Leaders, don't be afraid to do this. Don't be afraid of creating the next you. Don't be afraid of empowering. Don't be afraid of empowering the people around you. Don't be afraid of that. If you do not empower, if you do not encourage, if you do not motivate, if your action does not speak about your power, your team is not going to be as strong as it possibly can be. Empower people. Encourage people. Have them take risks. Make certain your team feels that they own this. They have this. This is all of ours. I can make decisions. My voice is heard. Make them need to be there by empowering them. One is too small a number to be great. How many dictatorships are left in the world? You're right. I leave. I'm a liar. Besides the U.S. Very few. They don't succeed. Because the people are not empowered. The people do not feel as if they have ownership. And in the ICE principle, 
There are three principles of leadership that I feel are critically important as we tie this all together. Intellectually, competence is key. As a leader, your competence level has to constantly be increased. What was yesterday may not be today and may not be relevant tomorrow. Therefore, continue to educate yourself and do not lie to yourself that you know it all. Continue to educate yourself. Continue to stay ahead of the curve because that trust goes with your competence. If I'm not growing as a coach, if I'm not into the latest strategies, if I'm not into the latest safe practices, if I'm not doing the things that are the latest and even more innovative and probably being a step ahead, I'm two step behind. Your competence is key. Don't get into the routine of the mundane, of the unproductive, and think that what was good then is going to be good tomorrow. Look to improve so that your people will trust you more. The C part of it is communal. Be fully, fully invested in the community in which you serve. Be fully invested in creating the right environment, an environment learning conducive and safe. Be fully invested in that. Have a consciousness about the community. One, too small a number to be great. Too small. It's about the whole. It is truly about the whole. And last, the emotional. Oh man, Cavis, what are you talking about? We gotta get, cry together? <laughs> are you talking about getting emotional now? We are becoming a desensitized, unemotional, robotic society. Our businesses are becoming E for email society. I have 562 unanswered emails. You know why? Because half of them, I'm waiting for them to come about five steps to ask me a question. Just walk over and ask me a question. And in so many businesses, we start a task and ping, it even pops up on our screens now. Now you gotta answer an email. Five seconds later, ping, here's an email. How are we supposed to be productive when everything we do is so impersonal, it's through email? Why don't we just get the email server to run the company? No one knows that she's having a bad day. No one cared that the dog ate his homework. No one asked how she's feeling. No one even knows what she takes in her coffee anymore. Unless she emails it to him. We're not emotionally engaged anymore. We understand the ping of our cell phones, but we don't understand or know the voice of our colleagues. Wow, I'm really gonna follow you when you don't know me. Imagine if, Mr. and Mrs. Leader, imagine if you got up out of your desk and you walked by to John and you said, John, how are you doing today? I know your name's not John. Very well. <laughs> imagine how you feel when Mr. Leader comes up to you and say that. Imagine how you feel if Mr. Leader just say, hey, Friday, you know what, guys? Don't worry about that deadline. Let's just talk. Let's just rap. Let's just get to know each other. Let's be engaged. Let's just talk. Let's just brainstorm together. One of the greatest examples of the emotional attachment leading to a business's success is this. My uncle, <clears throat> one of my uncles, passed away a couple of years ago built a very successful business. He had a group of undereducated people working for his construction company. And as he tells the story, this is now secondhand information, but I hope I capture the essence of it 
as he's told it. They're sitting around one day and they're just talking about things. They're laughing about things. And a guy that seldom said anything on his crew said something ingenious. Hey, what if we do this? Just through a casual lunch conversation. What if we do this? My uncle with an 11th grade ed education went home and pondered that what if. Then that what it start to take a form. That what it start to take a shape. It start to have a life. And before you know it, my 11th grade uncle with a suggestion and a collaboration became an inventor. You never know the genius that is around you. If only you ask. If only you connect. If only we focus on our legacy. In conclusion, all this that we do, all the things that we do, should have a destination. At the end of the day, it's about your legacy. It's about what you're going to leave behind. It's about the people that you build into. What's your legacy going to be?